Hi, I'm Roger Lane and this is the uh, installation instructions for the caster kit for the hydraulic cart from Harbor Freight. Alright, so this is the finished cart. This is what it looks like when you're all done. It has the fixed wheels on that end and the caster wheels on this end at the handle. You can see that the caster wheels work with conjunction with each other. Works nicely on a hard surface. Here's the up. Push with your foot to go up. The release lever is up here in the handle to let it go back down again. All right, before we start on uh, assembling the machine, we got to show and talk a little bit about some of the differences uh, that come from Harbor Freight. Uh, all of the gray colored hydro tables are different. Uh, they come in two different styles, and they are shown here by this one and this one. And you can see the difference of the distance between the bracket that I have to build and where the hole is at is here. And look over here and you can see how much farther away the hole is. So we need to get, send you the correct bracket for the fixed wheels. So this is where the fixed wheels end of the hydro cart is. And so you can see that this one is shaped sort of triangular, so we're calling this triangle. This one is shaped roughly rectangle and we're calling that the rectangle. When you go out and buy your table, I would pre prefer you to go out and buy your table before you call and order the cart, or the, the big wheels, because of this difference that's here. You need to be able to tell us whether you have a rectangle method or whether you have a triangle one, mostly because of the difference of that placement of that hole that we have to be able to build uh, two different types of fixed wheel brackets for it. The caster end is fine, but this is where the problem's at. So buy your table, get it home, uh, watch the rest of the video and you'll see how we open the box up and how we have these things setting upside down right now. When you get it in that position, you look at it and see whether you have the rectangle or the triangle side. Let us know what that is and we can send you the correct bracket. If you wound up with the wrong bracket, just give us a call and we'll exchange the bracket out for you, no problem. Now I'm going to show you some of the reasons why those, diff those brackets are different. Alright, here on the triangle one, in triangle form, we need to have this bracket to the outside and we fill in the gap with spacers to be able to have a nice tight bolt fit that goes on there. On the rectangle one, these plates are often bent out of place and you're going to have to hammer them into place. Along with that, we need to move to the inside bracket to be able to, put, to attach this to and we don't have to put washers in because we have a, a fixed spacer that's in there. This design may come out in the other styles too, but for right now, this is a fixed one. Also see that this plate is crooked. Don't worry about that. When you tighten this, put the bolt in here and tighten it down, that'll be, that'll come in place. But if this bracket, if the, if the gray bracket is bent out of shape, be ready to hit this with a hammer to be able to bend it closer to where it's supposed to be. The other difference comes when we install this. Here the bolting, the extra bolting hole positions are out on this spot. They're not up inside here where they are on the triangle one. But this is where the new bolt position is at. So if you have the ability to drill, drill a hole through there to bolt that on and give yourself a little extra support for this whole bracket that's in the rear of this machine. You'll notice assembly video has, is all done with the rectangle bracket and then at the end we switch over and show you how to do that with the triangle bracket. The bolt and everything else is the same. All right, this is the way that the kit, the hard, hydraulic table comes from Harbor Freight, the way that you buy it. This is the 500 pound version that's currently available from Harbor Freight. It's gray in color. If you have an older one that is yellow in color, I'm not certain how this, this kit will fit. Uh, you have to get a hold of me uh, if you have that and we'll talk about that one on one. The phone number here is 717-871-7900. That's mechanical coordinators. These are the tools that you'll need to be able to do the job. Razor knife to open the box, a 14 millimeter wrench and socket, a hammer. You also need a 5 16th wrench and a socket and an extension. And then two pairs of uh, adjustable wrenches and you can get away with slip lock, channel lock type pliers for this if you need to. Now we're going to open up the box and show you how to do it. I've already had a helper help me lift this up on the table. It works out best if you're on the table at this point. Before we get started, I'm going to turn it upside down on the table. 
all our work is going to be done upside down. That will take the box loose from the bottom. Now I'm going to use a razor knife and cut the box. We're going to turn it so that the handle hangs out over that end. Like that. Look for the hardware that goes into the handle. Setting off to the side. And we're going to take the handle, lift it up, and flip it over. And put it into the handle, handle holder. This goes the whole way up in, and you turn the threads in. So it goes through the hole on the near side of the handle and then do that on the other side as well. You have to keep pushing that up to get it in there. Now we'll need the 14 millimeter wrench and socket. And finish taking that in the rest of the way. You gotta be sure that you get it into the hole in the handle, so sometimes you gotta push the handle up and down a few times to be able to get it to go in the whole way. So once you get it started, it's there. You're actually turning the screw the whole way through the, the near side of the handle and going to the back side of the handle to tighten it in. Put it to the whole way down and tighten it up. Repeat on the opposite side as well. After the handle's in, it's time to put in the pump-up arm. That's a matter of taking that out of the packaging and taking the nut and bolt loose. This has a slight bend in it, as you can see. That bend goes upward, in this case, downward from our orientation. Put it the whole way in, line up the hole with the bolt, and thread the bolt the whole way through. Use your ratchet and tighten the bolt up. This is a 14 millimeter socket again. You can also use a 916th American for that. Tighten it tight, put the nut on the other side. And tighten the nut. And that's it. Next step is a little tricky. You might need to get some help, but there's a pair of props that are in here on the scissors arms that we're going to let pop up into place. See your arms dropping down? And then we're going to lash it on that. That will make it easier for the rest of the work that we're doing. Next up is to take the caster wheels off. Here's where it's nice to be able to have that lifted up. You can put your arm down the inside of it. 
to get to the head of the bolt on the inside. Take off all the hardware. Set it aside. We're not going to reuse it. and set the caster aside. Repeat on the opposite side. After you cut the wheel off the other side, we're going to take the wheels off of the back. This is the fixed end of the, of the part. Do the same on the other side as well. That's the end of the use of the 14 millimeter soft tools. Now let's look what comes in the box. Alright, so here's the kit, the way it comes in the box. We'll take it out. We have some dunnies on the top of it. And then wrapped up in the craft paper are the pieces. So here's the yolks. There's two of those. The kit that has the parts in it. The next is the pivots for the yokes. And then the rear axle assembly. Like this. And then we have two tires, four tires with two different types of hubs. One hub is offset to the outside, as you can see here. The other has centered hubs that are equal on both sides. This is for the caster, the centered wheels are for the caster, and then the ones with the offset are for the rear. We'll go into those in just a minute. All right, we're gonna open up the, the parts kit. We have a bag with big bolts. A bag of little bolts marked caster and fixed, or straight and, and front. And then we have another part that has these push nuts. First thing we're going to start on is the caster side. So we'll open the bolt, the bag for the, the uh, casters first. The casters are made, the caster pivot is made with an offset and a raised up portion. The offset goes to the outside and the turn down portion goes down. The pivot goes towards the handle. We have larger 5 16th nuts and bolts to put on. And these are either lock nut locking nut bolt nuts like this or they could be with lock nuts as well Go ahead. start them on both sides now I have snugged down all the bolts and you can see there's a little bit of movement in here. You want to adjust this movement so that this flat plate is roughly parallel with this edge down there. And then you can go ahead and tighten this down. After you snug down this side, 
align that one in the same way, parallel, parallel to the side. Then tighten up all the bolts. Right. After tightening up both of the plates that have the pivots on, then we'll put the fork down through. There's paint on here, so it's a little sticky to get down through everything to line up and push it down through until it sticks out the bottom. Do both sides in the same way. And you need the kit that has the black caps and the white puffs and white spacers in it. I'll take a black cap and the hammer. Put your hand on the top, hold that, drive that up on until it's down snug. Do the same on the other side. Now we need the bag that has the axles in it. As the center hook. I'll put the put the wheel in, put the bolt in, and put a spacer on the bolt, and then put it in the wheel. Push it the whole way through to the other side. You can see it come out, put the other spacer in, put it through like that. Take your nut, which is a nylon locking nut, turn it on as far as you can go for right now. We'll do the same thing on the other side. If you noticed, I put the, the head of the bolt to the outside of the cart when the wheel was facing that way. Now I'm using the adjustable wrenches to hold the head and the nut. And tighten it down. Don't tighten this until it's as tight as it can get or you'd squish the wheel. But you do want to have a little bit of free play in there. Side to side of the wheel. Like that. Do the same thing on the other side. That finishes up that side. I'm going to turn the unit around to the other side, the table, and then we'll start that end. All right, we've turned the cart around so that we can work from the other end, and this is going to be the fixed wheel side. Here's the bracket and brace for that. You can see that it has an angle bracket and a hole to bolt it through the tab that's here. The weight of the cart is going to sit on here, and this will sit over an extension of the, of the lip of this piece. And then we have an extra tab to be able to drill through to bolt it down for security if you're able. This is the portion where the wheel goes on. Now we're going to try it for a test fit to see how it goes between here. You can see that it goes between these two uprights and goes in and rotates down over top of this lip up front here. It sits down flat with the metal down flat on this surface that extends into here. 
You also see that the holes line up pretty closely for that. Now one of the differences here is because there's a weld on the inside there, we have to leave space up on the top. So here's a space here and a different space that's over here on this side. We're going to take the bolts out of the kit. We're going to use the bag that's marked fixed, fixed or straight wheel or rear. And we're going to take a bolt and two washers and slide two washers down in there. So another alternative is to put the bolt and the washers on first and then drop the piece down into it. And you can line the hole up and run it through. Put the nut on to hold everything in place. We'll push it over that way as far as we can. Then we're going to come in and try to slip them into the other side as well. Here I picked up the bracket you see. And it looks like two washers is actually too much. So we're only going to use one washer, which is just fine. I'm going to put the bolt in there and push it against the washer to put some pressure on it as I try to slide it down and then push the bolt through the rest of the way to get it in. Then put the nut on. Just pushing it down tightly. See it as far down as I can get it as tight as I can get. Now I'm cheating and I'm using a ratcheting wrench here for this. And I'm going to tighten up this side over here which is closest first. The washers take up any variation in the manufacture of this side over here. Over here you can see that it's really sticking out quite a bit. If we could, we could put that other, that other washer in there. Like that, to take up some of that extra space. Tighten it down. You see that's very firmly established. Now, I've made provision. I've made provision in here with a tab and a hole and a bolt. A place to put a bolt, but you see there's no hole in the frame. If you have the way, if you have the means, drill a 5 16th inch hole through that and put the second set of bolts in. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Go ahead. When you put your bit in your drill, just push it in just a little bit, not very far at all, and then tighten up your, up your bit, or your chuck. Then you can have enough room to be able to get down in here and drill like this. All right, so I have the holes drilled. Now I'm going to put the bolt up through from the bottom and start the nut on it. We'll do that on both sides. I've put an extension on my socket to be able to get down in there a little bit easier.
and we'll tighten it on both sides. If you don't have a way to drill that, the bracket, the shape of, that, of the black bracket that I put on there does have a pull all the weight vertically. This is just an extra piece of insurance. Now we're ready to put the wheels on. Here we use the wheels with the offset hub, with the offset to the middle. And just slide it on. Take the black wheel caps with the metal insert, put it in, hammer it down till it's done. Repeat the process on the other side. Now comes the tricky part, and that is of getting these, these safeties back down again without pinching your fingers. I use the hydraulic piece, and I lift it up like this, and then I take, a, take something else and go in the middle and knock it out of the way, and down it goes. Now we're going to get a helper, and I'm going to roll it over and put it on, its, on the floor. So now after it's on, its, on the ground, it works nicely if you take the top, just lift the top and lift it up and let it go back down again. And then release the lever up here let it go the whole way down. Take your jack and after a couple of quick jacks, the air should be out and it will go up. Raise this up as far as it will go. Now you can see how your caster wheels work, how the thing goes along. Rubber mat is not comes, it's not adhered to the, to the table. I'm going to show you how to do that. The mat is almost always cut crooked, and you always see that there's a short side and it's almost always in opposite corners. So see how, how crooked it is? You don't want to end up with that, so we're going to push that out until it's even and share that space with the two opposite corners. Then I take my fingernail and I try to make sure that this edge is roughly parallel to that. Put a piece of wood about in the middle. I clamp it down. And you can clamp right down to the metal deck. And clamp it tight. Now it won't go anywhere. Now we're going to take this end and flip it up over like this. Here's the product I use, weld wood, contact cement. If you go to your home uh, building supply store, just tell them you're putting down laminate, like laminate countertop, what do they use? This is what's used for laminate countertop. It comes in cans as small as this. You can even buy some of this in a spray product. I'm not too familiar with that. Use a glue brush, something you can use once or twice and throw away. Dip in. I cover every edge the whole way out to the edge. Every surface the whole way out to the edge. Just keep pushing it around until you have a, an even coat that's down on it. And smooth it out. 
do both surfaces. As you see, it goes a little farther along on the metal because it doesn't soak in. Now we're going to let it dry 10 to 15 minutes, and we'll come back and show you what that's like then. That's dry and ready to, ready to adhere. Now we have one chance at putting this down right. So you got to be careful when you're rolling it down. Pick it up like I am and just start laying it out this way. Keep pushing down and as you're pushing out, you're letting it come down. I also have a roller which makes it nice and easy to get the last of the problems out of it. As you see, it's adhered immediately. Now I'll take the clips off. Roll back the other way and repeat the process. Now we'll come back in 10 or 15 minutes and we'll finish it out. All right, this is dried now. It's time to roll out the rest of it. I do have to caution you that this glue has, is very volatile. It puts off a lot of smells. You do want to do this in a large area or outside because it does smell very bad. After we stick it down, we're going to, if you're satisfied with that edge, you're okay. I like to cut it back a little bit, have a little bit of reveal of the metal underneath. Keeps it from, uh, keeps it from getting caught on things. I use a straight edge, a metal straight edge. Line it up just a little bit back beyond the edge of the steel. I'm looking at the steel, I'm not looking at the rubber at this point. And come along and clamp it. Double check it to make sure that it's parallel. And it is. Now I use a folding back knife with a razor knife in it, one that locks the blade and holds the blade very tightly. Then I come along, follow the straight edge, press straight down through once, hard and firm. Peel off the rubber. the same thing on all the other edges. If you're not cutting the whole way through cleanly, change the blade. You need a new blade. Need the 
or you're using the point of the blade anyhow. See how crooked that edge is? Mm -hmm. Comes from the factory. I think that gives a nicer edge. That extra glue that's there will come off. It will also get dirty and come off. But it gives you a nice edge that fits the table the whole way around. So there's your new hydraulic cable. The instructions that come with the table are here with it. Shows pictures, shows how to put the wheels on and the handles and the other things that we talked about before. Also gives you instructions on operating the hydraulics and what to do if there's a parts list as well. So be sure to keep this for your own information. There's the down. I do have to caution you that the hydraulics does have a chance, a tendency to drop over time you put something on this overnight, make sure that you don't have it hanging out over the handle because it would knock it off. Before we finish, I want to show you the original hydraulic part, the one that I've been making that has the wagon wheel steering. The wagon steering is so that you have control over the rough terrain, makes it easier to control where it's at. You also don't have the handle in the back to go with that as well. This still has the up and down controls here and the down control is over here on the lever beside it. Let's go down. Thank you very much. If you have any problems, please call me, Roger, at 717-871-7900. Thank you very much. Have a good day.